Hello, this is Chove, the Shiny Colors Discord, and welcome back to the Shiny Review. It's been a little bit. I figured that with me being out for so long, a couple health complications here and there, nothing too serious, but I am more or less back to 100%, and because it has been so long since we did another video, I figured, well, while this banner isn't exactly the craziest, might as well pick things back up with a review. We'll be talking about the newest Mono and Jury. They're both permanent, so don't worry about them right now, unless you want those two extra copies. They will be back once this banner is over. Let's go ahead and get started with Mono. Jumping ahead of the line once again, Mono 9 has entered the stage as a mixed vocal visual unit that switches her preference as you get more copies of her. With a mixture of single target attacks, AoE attacks, and multi-stat buffing, she's sure to be a hit across most teams. The issue here is that her appeals are fairly weak in execution, and her passives need a mixture of herself, but also her better appeals to make the most of her. They decided to do the classic chance of Illumine, which is that all of her passives have low activation chance because she buffs your passive rate activations, which is frustrating, to say the least. Her passives on paper look impressive for a permanent SSR, but have low activation chances to work off of her appeals, boosting your activation rates for one to two turns depending on the appeal that you use. It more or less makes her base appeal kind of awful, and her four star slash three star appeal more or less to be fine-ish. Many of the major Illuminate teams rightfully revolve around Mono 8 to make their strategy work, so shifting focus to this Mono requires going back to the drawing board in terms of how you build and play. Truth be told, I really don't know a particularly good build for this Mono, so I'm not going to try to pretend I know one. So, if you have any ideas for this Mono, feel free to leave them in the comments. This Mono has very niche usage, and is honestly a little weak in practice. Her rolls are attack all, buffer, and passive rate up, and I low to moderately recommend pulling for this Mono. If you do not have any other card, this Mono is arguably a little stronger than Mono 4. So if that's kind of your baseline for how strong a mono card you have is, then Mono 9 is not a bad choice. Outside of that, unless you really want to play Illumine, I wouldn't really worry too much about this mono. Mono's initial skill is a visual 2.5 appeal that follows up with a vocal 1.0 appeal to all judges that raises your passive activation chance by 10% for one turn. This links into a vocal dance visual 30% buff for one turn. This links into a Vocal Dance Visual 30% up for 5 turns. The 3 star version of this appeal is a Vocal 4.0 that follows up with a Visual 2.0 to all judges, and buffs your passive activation rate by 15% for 2 turns. The Link appeal is the same Vocal Dance Visual 30% buff for 5 turns. Her Memory appeal when maxed out is a Vocal Dance Visual 50% buff for 5 turns that links into a Vocal Visual 2.0. Now for the passives. Her 1 star passive is a vocal visual 25% up as long as it's turn 3 or earlier with a 20% chance to activate 3 times. She actually has two 2 star passives, the first being a vocal visual 80% up as long as mono is in your skill history, which has a 15% chance to activate 3 times and also unlocks a visual plus 50 uncap. The second passive is a vocal visual 40% up as long as it's turn 3 or earlier. Again, this has a 10% chance to activate twice. Her 3 star uncap is a vocal visual combined plus 100, so 100 vocal and 100 visual. Her 4 star uncap is a vocal plus 150, and her event uncap is actually a visual plus 50. Now, on to support recommendations, featuring, of course, the MVP, Daikichi. You thought you'd escape Daikichi in a visual card? Nah. -uh. If you don't intend on running Mono as your center, it's unavoidable, and realistically, you're probably going to be running her as the second appeal anyway if she's your center. Load up on your best visual passives and find the mastery combinations that make producing less of a headache for you. Cards like the Natsuha and Kaho are a great combination, and Nichika is a fantastic card for visual as well. The upgraded Meguru is good for vocal and visual builds, so you can consider her for both. Your vocal options get to feature the latest Hiyori, who happens to have a lot of reasonable things going on for a permanent. Hinana sits as the backbone for most vocal builds, and the Straylight SSRs have great synergy as well as, of course, the Mami Mi and Sakuya combo, which is arguably one of the better combinations you can run. On to the grades. As a center, I would say C plus to B minus at best. Mono's strength as a center is fully dependent on splitting your stats in half in order to make both hits matter. Naturally, this comes at odds against several year deep metagames on focusing on a single stat, as dual stat and especially tri-stat still struggle to put up numbers you would ideally want. 
The other issue is that multipliers are incredibly low. The other issue is that the multipliers are incredibly low. The damage just won't be there, so it's not really worth it, I would say. As a unit, I would say B+, maybe B. I think she's fine. In a similar discussion to her memory appeal, Mono has the benefit of strong passives, but sort of weak appeals to compensate. Her access to AoE is okay, but it leaves a lot to be desired for the average player, considering that most of the appeal strength is single target, and the AoE is kind of just an afterthought. Her passives having worse activation chances just to play around her 3-star appeal is fairly annoying and hinders the card of being consistent compared to other mono cards. While I get what they're going for, I kinda wish that they would just let a mono card be strong that also buffs your passive activation chances while still having good numbers behind it. At least make it kind of interesting. Next up we then have Jury. Continuing the support for Visual Hokura, our latest Jury card focuses heavily on raising how much Visual and SP you can earn, but also how high your Visual can reach given enough time. At a glance, these numbers feel a bit low. Visual stamina aside, but having potential access to a plus 12 Visual up every lesson, if your luck is insanely high, is a decent payoff. Again, this won't happen very often, but it's appreciated when it does happen. Jury's passives are also a little weak for a 2022 support, and the appeal feels more tailored towards Collabo Fest more than anything else, especially considering the Daikichi meta we're still revolving around. She's solid, but kind of an odd card. Her support skills are Idol's Bond, Promise Recovery, and Rest Boost, and she has four unique masteries. Visual Mastery SP, reaching plus 10 at level 75. Visual Mastery Stamina, reaching plus 5 at level 80. Unit Mastery Visual Limit Up, reaching plus 3 at level 70, and Unit Mastery Visual, reaching plus 3 at level 75. Her support appeal does scale, starting at a visual 2.5 out of the box, working its way up to a 2.6 at level 60, and then gradually working its way up to a visual 3.0 by level 80. Her TFD idea is visual, her insight token for grad is dance, her proficiencies and landing point are in visual and mental. Jury's one-star passive is a visual 30% up that requires the turn count to be 3 or earlier, and has a 20% chance to activate twice. Her two-star passive is a visual 70% up and attention 30%. Her two-star passive is a visual 70% up and attention 50% up as long as your mental is 75% or higher, which has a 20% chance to activate once. Her three-star uncap is a visual plus 100. Oh, I should also then mention that she gets a mental plus 50 uncap at one star. Her four-star appeal is a slow visual 3.5 appeal, meaning that it will always go last, and it raises the judge's interest by 30% for two turns. Jury gets a B+. Jury is a perfectly fine permanent support for your visual needs. A lot of her kit is meant to synergize with Hokago specifically, meaning that much of her strengths will heavily depend on the rest of your support lineup. Outside of Twilight's Collection Kaho, you rarely see Hokago supports in visual lineups, so you may have to make a couple sacrifices to make the most of this card. Barry Natsuha is kind of like the prime example. There's also the Rinze, but she has been getting kind of mixed play so far. I think a visual Hokura solidifies itself through its next produced card, potentially, we may see that combination working out much better. Her passives are good in the context of perms, but lacks a bit of the power at the higher levels that you'd ideally want. Again, a low to moderate recommendation, she will be coming back around eventually. And by that, I mean every banner after this one. Just good luck on the odds with that. So that'll do it for the video today. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and thank you for your continued support towards the channel. I know things have been quiet. I've got a couple things that are brewing, but progress is slow. I have been sick for the last like week and a half and I've finally gotten over it. So I'm doing my best to get caught up on everything that I realistically want to do before the year ends. And hopefully I'll be able to do all of those things before the year ends. So till the next video, whenever that happens and for whatever banner comes next, let's look forward to it together. I've been Cho, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.